Battle Bears 2 Battle Royale mode has already been confirmed by Brian, one of the developers over at Skyview. I personally believe that the Battle Royale craze will end before the launch of BB2, but since Ben said so, we can't really argue against it. My biggest recommendation is to make the Battle Royale game mode last on the program list. This way, Ben and the rest of Skyview can tell with more certainty if developing a huge map and a bunch of other stuff is worth it, and if that game mode would even be played. In the meantime, they could work on the single player or work on animations or whatever they need to do. But of course, that isn't my only suggestion. I can sometimes meet the definition of a bigot, but I don't care. I want games to be thought out. I want the games I play to be special. I want the future of gaming to have passion put into them. I want BB2 to be special. Just like gold. Of course, I don't always get what I want, but I think it's worth complaining about stuff I want that would make the game more fun in a small video. I always think that if more people pitch in on some ideas, others can pick the best ones and come out with the ultimate product. So don't only listen to me ramble on for 20 minutes and take a little time reading what other people have to say in the Discord. I recommend letting Skyvu employees talk on the Discord more often. Of course, you shouldn't force them, but it does get a little lonely with only Brian and Ben only comes on once a week. But still, do whatever you think is a good idea. Remember, these are only suggestions. I believe the thing that made Battle Bears Royale and Battle Bears Gold become so popular is the creativity of the weapons, maps, and characters. If it was just your average Call of Duty clone, then nobody would care. But this game is something different. It has explosions, pies, nukes, people blowing themselves up for some reason. Some floating dude that throws fidget spinners that melt through people. A tan bear that throws fidget spinners that don't do anything. A gerbil that pukes green stuff that explodes people, whoa! And a pink bear that cuts you to bits with two rainbow covered chainsaws. Whew. People still play Pixel Gun? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is... Battle Bears isn't the game to have generic gameplay and game modes. Creativity was one of the main selling points for Gold. Well, at least it was for me. So instead of just copying an entire game that already exists, make a new and exciting one from scratch. And maybe even better, taking inspiration from other titles. Emphasis on inspiration. Leave the blatant copying for Pixel Gun. The first thing I want to discuss is something that you guys over at Skyview probably forgot about or didn't think you needed to include for the Battle Royale with Cheese mode for BBR. That one little thing that changes the entire way you play Battle Royale and the cause for a camping huggable subclass to be born was the lack of a storm. You know. A field thing that slowly closes in on players and forces them to meet up and kill each other? One big reason for this is to prevent camping, and also other games like Fortnite and PUBG don't have to worry about someone using SoFly. But of course, creativity is something to strive for, so I don't think adding a circle that gets smaller and calling it a day is going to sit well with me. I'm a little grumpy boy and I don't want of that. Instead, there should be an entirely different approach to how the storm will work. The main point of a storm is to shrink the playing field so that players have to meet in a certain place. As long as the playing field gets smaller, we can do just about anything we want. I personally like the way that totally accurate battlegrounds approach this idea by adding giant walls that would fall around the map. If you were outside the walls, you'd just instantly die. This was a breath of fresh air for me, as technically it was a shrinking circle, but it felt somewhat more natural and creative than the storm in Fortnite. Psst, I have 
have another idea for the storm, which I think might be very fun to play with, but might cause some small issues by itself. Stay tuned. Well, I mean, like, I'm gonna talk about it right now, so... Just exist for the next two seconds, I guess. Reusing assets is nothing to be ashamed of. If done correctly, it can even be praised. <coughs> I said correctly. I know Ben already said that there was going to be a single player campaign added to BB2, so why not use something from there? I'm getting at this maybe, just maybe, a storm could be a field that blocks out the huggables. If you are outside of the shield, then you will slowly die from huggables that will try to kill you. I can imagine you using stock standard huggable for this. Pink that are slow, golden that are fast but have less health, giant blues that have a lot of health and do good damage, and orange chargers that charge. Maybe even a secret WTF huggable. <laughs> They spawn sparingly in the beginning, but will spawn more often as the game progresses. It is important not to have too many huggables spawn at the same time, as not to create too much lag for everyone playing. Once the player number decreases, then more huggables can spawn. There you go. Lag solved. I do think that there could be extra types of huggables. The zombie huggable. These guys could have double or triple the health of a normal huggable, so they would be a bigger threat. They would only spawn in certain locations of the map anyways, so you can always just avoid them if you really don't want to fight them. I'll cover the locations later. Anyways, back to the shield idea. The shield keeping the huggables out would slowly get smaller and would force the player to one center point like how it goes in normal battle royale games. The center circle would be randomized, at least 75% of the time. The other 25% of the time, it would shrink towards the middle of the map instead. I'll get to this later. And by later, I mean right now. Maybe. Well, I'm gonna be talking about the subject in and whatnot, but it's gonna be at the end of this section. So, mmm. I don't know, just wait, Bubbo. Psst. Just saying, maybe the Huggables could drop permanent power-ups like speed, health, and cutting down on reload, but that's just an idea. This way, you're rewarded for killing the Huggables. That's a good gameplay design right there. So the general map of Battle Royale mode has already been shown, and I'm not the only one disappointed. I'm not saying it's a bad layout, uh, it will work with other games, but eh, it just seems pretty darn boring. Brian did say that nothing was set in stone yet, so that's a good thing. I always think that community suggestions would be a large part of game development, or at least should be. So I'm glad Brian and Ben are open to suggestions by the community. I thought it would be better if Ben and the others at Skyvu would become more active on the Discord, wink wink. So first off with the map, I have no idea why, but it feels kinda really empty. Everything just blends together, nothing stands out, and at the same time, it feels too big and cluttered. The only real places that stand out from the rest are the desert area and the water. It's a very odd feeling, I don't know. I guess the only good thing about this layout is that every direction leads to somewhere. This is actually a good thing, but then it doesn't let anything stand out majorly. So there are no main points of interest, like Tilted Towers in Fortnite. Anyways, Tilted Towers is where a lot of players go, so it's pretty dangerous to loot there, but it's rewarding. You could either do that, or go to some random house where there's nobody else goes, so you can loot without distractions. 
The lack of bold, important spots makes the choice of high risk, high reward non-existent. To fix this problem, make more empty area, more forests, more plains, or more whatever else you can think of that isn't town or looting place. Also, where is HIP test lab? Why did you guys leave out one of the most important points in the entire Battle Bears trilogy? SMH Skyvu. Okay, let me try to fix this map. I am one of the best improvers around. And there we go. All done. Thank me later. So, what's the main difference between my map and Skyvu's map? Skyvu is too cluttered and doesn't have many points of main interest. Also, something to note is that the area is entirely thought up from scratch, so there isn't any nods to previous titles as far as I'm aware. The way I fix these issues with my map is I made many more points of high interest, while still keeping it relatively small. I would imagine only 20 players being in a match at a time, as a very small chance that BB2 won't get a big player base. Even if BB2 has more than 400 active users at a time, 20 player lobbies are still easier to fill up. And also due to the simple fact that 20 players create less lag than 100 players. Due to the fact that there are going to be AI huggables walking around, it might be a little laggy. So we want to stop as much lag as possible. If lag isn't that big of a problem, we can fit up most of 50 players. Just extend out the map a little bit and add more houses and small towns. Now it's time for me to explain little parts of my map and stuff so that you have an idea of what they are and the purpose they serve. First off is the HIP main base. This can somewhat resemble the base from BB0, but since we mainly get to see the inside and that worm part outside, the layout can be changed to serve gameplay purposes. This place would have huggables spawning normally here, even when the base is protected by the shield. A lot of players would probably drop here, so you have to be killing hugs and the players. I would rate this place a danger rating of 5. The other 5 rated place would be Pelicant Graveyard. Remember the part where Abby threw all the Pelicants so Will couldn't escape? Yeah, that's where they lie now. Since they landed on top of a field of huggables, zombie huggables would spawn there normally. This place would also have a lot of players, so watch your back for all of remains. Back to HIP, notice that little brown circle thing? Remember the worm guy? This is his or her tunnel, and you can enter it to go to other parts of the map. The tunnel will lead to the main town place, and this north side of the map, where anyone who wants to go to the desert area. There is also a den in the tunnels, where some zombie huggables exist. They don't spawn here, but they're just there, and don't respawn when killed. Every other place that I mention after this won't have huggables spawning normally. They are all safe until they are out of the shield. The main town place is just a copy and paste of what Ben had in mind for the middle town or whatever. Pretty stock standard with its low danger rating. I wouldn't imagine too many players coming to this spot, as the loot is pretty plentiful, but still existent. The desert area is pretty cool, as it is also a copy and paste from Ben's map. Though, maybe there could be an Aztec pyramid here to reference BBG or BBR, but I think it's kinda good as it is. Next to the desert plain would be another small town thing, with the Berserker crater next to it, or maybe even in a house. Technically, we didn't see where the Berserker landed, all we saw is that one Huggable's point of view. This should be another safe area to raid without too many other players getting in your way. Now for the middle part of the map. Remember in BBZ, the Zombocalypse Pyramid in the middle? 
with the crashed pelican next to it. For gameplay reasons, I added a bunch of spiky rock formations around the pyramid. This would be a counter against snipers, as without cover, sniper would be too overpowered. I believe it's important to stay true to the lore of Battle Bears, but gameplay comes first. Now my idea for this area isn't going to have any interesting loot or whatever. Instead, it's going to be the end point in the game. Remember when I said the storm could close in on one certain location at random around 75% of the time? The other 25% of the time, it will shrink to the middle of the map. After all the remaining players are all in the middle of the map, the shield, keeping all the huggables at bay, will shut off forcing the remaining survivors to either die from the huggables or die by from another player. Of course, the last person standing wins, like any other royal game. Remember that if you are all confused about the layout of the map and the future of the story, just say that the map isn't canon, or else Squadron 6 would have to be somewhere around this area. But, however, there is an issue with the Huggable Storm idea. One thing that will probably destroy my entire script and I would have wasted all my time on this video because of this small little thing that a single handedly destroy many hours of work. If players find a camping spot or out of bounds glitch or whatever, they can escape the Huggables and stay there for the rest of the game. It wouldn't be fun to know that two players are left in a match, and you just walk up on the pyramid like a normal person and see no one is there, and instead they are just sitting in a corner, completely immune to the huggables. Welp, since this argument seemingly obliterated my entire idea, I have a counter-argument that solves literally every problem. Have an instant kill electricity wall shortly follow the shield field. The instant kill wall will have to move slower than any class in the game, or else it will be unfair to Riggs or Tillman. The wall will just keep players from camping in the same spot for the entire game, as also it will be used to unload chunks of the map so that there is less lag, so more huggables can spawn too. Very cool. Some other things that are worth mentioning are the small towns. They are there for those safer than sorry players who want to get some good stuff before encountering an enemy. Those players should be cared for, so there are going to be little towns and houses scattered around the map. Remember, having things around like moving that town place closer to the center would be completely fine by me, as long as it serves gameplay reasons first. Speaking of gameplay, did any of you notice the trillions of trees seemingly placed randomly around the map without a care in the world? Well, that's just a bit too accurate. <laughs> but the trees do actually serve a purpose. Whether or not a story is auto-aim mechanic is kept or is changed to a more traditional type of sniping, trees would need to help make her not so overpowered. The trees serve a similar reason of existence for the giant rock pillar things in the middle of the map. Also, remember when I said the huggables could drop permanent power-ups like speed boost or reload reduction? Maybe those could use for balancing purposes, as the same power-up would help other classes more than others. This would help other classes that aren't that good in Royal to stand up against hordes of Oliver mains that are going to flood the server. For example, the same speed power-up would give 10% speed to Oliver, while giving Tillman's or Riggs 25% instead. This feature would make players want to kill Huggables, as well as help balance some of the weaker classes at the same time. Of course, there should be a carrying capacity for each power-up, as every class can only hold two of the same power-ups at a time, let's say. Remember, these are all ideas and can be further refined by the community or by the smart lads over at Skyvu. Welp, this is the end of my documentary long video about what I want for the new Fortnite update. Hope Ben listens to me and the community with ideas about the future of BB and BB2. This is me signing off. 
after I edit this, I'm probably going to be really tired. So SSP better pin this because it's going to take a lot of work to edit half of the video alone. Make sure you subscribe to Roo for good content and Kabaka Wackle for hacking tutorials. This has been Bob Stuntsville and goodbye. I'm gonna go to sleep now.